Hi there. Welcome to the second video in this Rails tutorial series. In this video, we're going to test within a Rails application. In order to do that, we need to go ahead and create a Rails app. Let's keep things really simple and create a blog slash CMS Rails app. I'd never do this for real because there are so many blogging and CMS platforms out there but this will serve as a good example for our tutorial. I'll call the Rails app News Hub. To kick things off, I'll CD into my workspace and create a new Rails app. Now I'll CD into the new app and I'll open the code base up with VS Code. Now I need to install the RSpec uh, gem and specifically I want the RSpec Rails gem. So let's look for RSpec Rails, bring this over here and I will grab the gem name from here. Chrome. I'll open the gem file and under the test group I'll add the RSpec Rails gem. Now I can run bundle and the last thing I need to do is uh, install or initialize RSpec which I can do with a Rails generator command. So it's Rails generate RSpec install. And now we have our spec installed, so we're ready to get going. So the first thing I want to start building out is a model. And I think I'll start with a post model so we can build out our uh, blogging application. But what I'm going to do is rather than jumping right into creating the model, I'm going to try and follow TDD, which is short for test driven development. And the idea here is that we write our test first and then we write a small amount of code to make that test pass and then we write another test and then we repeat the process. So we're following this uh, red-green refactor uh, loop. There are two main benefits as I see it to using TDD. The first and probably the most important is because we are writing the test first in theory, we'll never have any code which is not tested because we're never adding code that isn't uh, to make a test pass. And that's really good for having good test coverage, which should give us uh, you know, robust code, um, which is easy to change. The other benefit is that breaking down uh, our uh, problem space or breaking down the code that we're trying to write into small chunks that can be tested and uh, iteratively worked on in this red-green refactor method can result in code which is uh, more composable and results in code which is uh, better in the end than you would have produced if you had not been following TDD. Now, I don't use TDD all the time, but um, I do use it a fair amount and I wouldn't advocate for using it 100% of the time. What I would say is get comfortable with TDD and over time you'll learn when to use it and when not to do it. As an example, if I'm doing uh, prototyping or writing some code which is very experimental, I wouldn't use TDD. If I'm doing something like creating a Rails model, which I've done many times before and I know um, kind of the flow and the pattern, then I would use TDD and it actually makes things probably faster. Now let's jump into writing some code. You can see I have this new spec directory. And in fact, you'll also notice there's a test directory that was created when we initially uh, built the Rails application using, using Rails new. So we don't need that at all. I can actually delete that uh, at some point. Let's do it now. 
what I'm going to be using now is the spec directory, which was created by our spec. So to create a model spec, I'll add a new folder and call it uh, models. And I'll add a new file, which I'll call uh, post uh, spec rb. Inside here, I'm going to require the Rails helper, which I'll need to do for all spec files. This essentially gives the uh, spec access to Rails, so access to the models, controllers, etc. And I'm going to use a describe block. So I'm going to describe, um, in this case, it will be the post the class itself. And I'll specify the type and I'll close off the block. The reason for uh, specifying the type is that Rails has uh, slightly different, sorry, RSpec has slightly different helpers for uh, different types of specs. And you can also do things like run all of the model tests, for example. What I can do now is run the tests and we'll expect to get our first failing test because we haven't created this post class yet. So you can see I'm just running bundle exec our spec spec, which is going to run all of the tests in our code base. And as we expect, we get uninitialized constant post. So to fix this, let's create the post class in our application. So we have app uh, models, and I'm going to create a new file, post rb. I'm just going to say class post and end the class here. I'll run the tests again. And you can see our tests are now green and we have zero examples, zero failures. The reason for that is uh, we have uh, a block here. So we do have, the reason this is green is that we do have some uh, RSpec logic which is being run. We've installed RSpec and we have this describe block, but we haven't actually written any tests. Hence why there's uh, zero examples passing. Now we're in a position to start adding some tests to this uh, describe block. And the first thing I'm going to do is check that a newly created post is valid. And then what we can do over time is build it up and say, uh, you know, if a post is created with this set of attributes, is it valid? If it's missing a title or a post body, it should probably be invalid. So let's start with something simple and I'll say it is valid um, with valid attributes. And inside here, I'll say expect post.new to be valid. So in this case, I'm running bund exec rspec and I'm running this particular test. Um, I only have one test in my application at the moment, so I could run all the tests, but just to let you know, uh, that's what I'm doing. Now we have undefined method valid for post. And the reason we're saying that is because valid is a Rails method. But what I did when I created the post is I just, I just created a class. I didn't actually um, inherit from active record. The easiest way for me to fix that is probably to use the Rails generator and just override the uh, post RB that, that I previously created. So I'll jump down to the console and I'll do rails generate model post and I'll give it a dash dash force, which will, um, it's only required because I've already got a post RB here and we want to tell rails to uh, forcefully override it. So I'll go ahead and run that. And you can see that uh, the post class has changed slightly. It now inherits from application record but there's some other changes here, um, most notably this uh, migration which was generated. So what I'll do for now is I'll rerun the tests and hopefully we'll get a different error, which we do. It says migrations are pending. So to run that, I'll do uh, bin rails db migrate. The reason we need to do that um, just to touch on quickly, is because 
uh, active model uh, classes should always be backed by a database table because it's uh, an ORM. So when we generate a Rails model post, we're also um, generating a migration which will create a posts database table. And Rails will basically give us this warning if we try and run the application or run the tests when we haven't actually built that uh, database table. But now that I've run the migrations, that database table exists. So let's run the tests again to see what happens. Okay, so we've got a passing test. And this is a, an, an actual passing test. We have one example failed, uh, sorry, passed, and a zero failed. And just to recap, we're saying post.new, we expect that to be valid. And we'd kind of expect that because at the moment post doesn't have anything in it really. If we look at the schema, it's literally, literally just, it has these timestamp fields which Rails adds by de default. But other than that, there's nothing there. So uh, anytime we create a new post, it will be valid. What I want to do now is add a title field to post. And so one of the first tests I want to write is to say, when we create a post without a title, it should not be valid. So I'll jump back, I'll jump back over to the specs and I'll add a new test and I'll say it um, is not valid without a title. And now I can say expect, um, in fact, let me say, um, well, what I'm going to do now, in fact, is I'm going to use a subject. So, um, in our spec, we have the concept of a subject, and by default, our spec will initialize the described object here uh, as the subject. So if I reference subject, what I'm actually referring to is this. So what I can do is subject.title, if I set that to nil, and I say subject, expect subject to not be valid and this subject is very um, very useful um, you'll find over, over time most spec files I'll use subject I'll, I'll reference subject many times you can even override a subject which we'll come on to later but for now let's run this spec and we get an error uh, we're nicely following our red green refactor process and you can see the error says undefined method title and that makes sense because as i said earlier the in this if we look at the schema we only have two fields on post the created at and updated at timestamps which were added by default by rails so to fix that i can do rails generate migration um, and i can say add title to post and the title field should be a string so now I have this new migration which if we just have a look you can see it adds a new column to post called title which is a string and if I run the tests we're probably going to see the migration error again there we go so I can run in Rails db migrate and let's run the tests again. You can you can actually see there that the schema was updated. And okay, so we get another another red test, but you can see that it's it's a different error this time. Uh, this time, the test is expecting post to be invalid, but it's not. Now the reason for that is although we've added the field, we haven't told Rails that that field is required. To do that, we need to add a validation. To add a validation, I'll jump over to post.rb and I'll add validates. So there are, there are many different types of Rails validators. 
There's ones to, to check for the type, so whether something's a string or an integer or a Boolean. Um, you have uh, length checks. You can check the length of a string, the size of a number. Uh, you can do things with enums. But in our case, we're just going to do a very simple presence validation. So I can just say validates presence of title. I'll save that and I'll rerun the test. And there we go, it's green. So this post spec is now passing. When we create when we try to create a post without a title, it's not valid. But let's now run all the tests and see what happens. So we have two tests in our application and you can see the first one pass uh, sorry the first one fails. And that's because they they are contradictory now because the first one says we expect a post um, with no title set to be valid. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this to subject to match our uh, previous test here. The second thing I'm going to do, uh, as we touched on earlier, is I'm going to define my own subject. And what that will allow me to do is have the default subject be created with all of the attributes. And then in the specific uh, invalid tests here, we can set the field to nil. So let me, let me show you what I mean. Um, I'll have, I can define uh, or redefine subject here. So I'll say post new uh, title a, uh, a post. So what happens now is by default, the subject has a title, sorry, uh, by default, um, the subject, uh, which is post, has a title. So we should expect this test to pass now because post has, by default, all of the uh, fields that we expect. But then in this test, subject is still uh, this object here. But then what we do is we override title and we set it to nil, and then we check that it's not valid. So let's run all the tests again and see what's happening. And there we go. Two examples, uh, or two tests run, I should say. Uh, two examples passed and zero failed. Now, while we're talking about subject, I just want to bring up another um, magic aspect method, which I use quite a lot, and that's described class. So the subject is like this initialized version of post. But if we just want to reference post, the raw uh, class constant itself, we can use described class. And that's good because we're already telling our spec up here that we're testing the post. So it's kind of unfortunate that we have to reference it again here. So to fix that and dry up our code, I can do described class. If I run the test, uh, or, or if I run all of the tests, you can see they're still uh, passing. That's all for this video. Let's recap the things that we covered. We created our first model test. We created a post model uh, in Rails, driven by test-driven development. And we then tested that uh, post has a title field and we check that if the title field is missing, um, that post should be invalid. And we did all of that using uh, TDD. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.